Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to session 20 of Principles of Management course students. We have come a long way and discussed about the three prominent managerial functions that is planning, organizing and staffing by now. Let's move further and try to find out that once we have done appropriate staffing in the organization that is placing the right person at the right job, how now we can enhance their effectiveness in the profile where they have joined as an organization member. So for this we shall be initiating the concept of management development today. We have come across the terms training earlier, training which is for generally blue collar workers, management development is for those who are at lower middle or upper management levels in the organization. Development pertains to a continuous learning in their existing knowledge. What happens in organization? The future of organization is highly depend on the capability of the manager. Now can managers take trial and error method for decision making? No, that is not possible because the decisions they take has a profound influence on organizations survival and growth for tomorrow. So for the decision making that the manager takes they need to have good amount of knowledge not only about the job that they are doing but the related fields as well and along with knowledge the manager must have right kind of analytical skill. So here comes the answer to have a sustained development of competencies and analytical skills of the managers we need to go for the concept of management development. Let us study the detail with respect to the theoretical concepts of management development. Management development is a long term process by which the managers conceptual knowledge and competencies are developed to make them more suitable for present and future responsibilities. It is actually the process of upgrading the competencies of managers through relevant learning experiences. When it comes to significance of management development, to make certain that every manager is aware of latest and best managerial practices, why so that the measurement methods and work techniques that they need to use in their profile they are aware of. Second significance of management development is to ensure better leadership behavior by improving managers leadership styles because tomorrow this manager is going to take up the leadership role along with his or her communication skills and motivational skills. Further. Management development helps the manager to prioritize and optimize of resources of the organization so that they achieve within given time and resource their objectives. To make sure that attitudes, values and beliefs of manager they match with the core values and strategy of the organization. Also to assess and develop the skills of the managers, how the management development does so systematically so that they can in turn attract, develop and retain the talented people in the organization. And finally to assist the manager to build their strengths and work on the weaknesses so that they can achieve their individual career aspirations tomorrow. So these were the significances of management development students. Now how we develop the individual manager? So there are methods of 
management development. These methods include mentoring, business games, coaching, behavioral modeling, in basket training and action learning, job rotation, internship, programmed learning and simulation methods, university programs, executive coaches, in-house development centers, executive orientation and maybe laboratory training, case study, lecture method and role playing. Let us discuss few of these management development methods by which we harness the existing knowledge of the manager. So, the first method we shall be discussing is the mentoring method. Now, what is mentoring method? Mentor means someone you can rely on as a role model who will have one to one interaction with you and will try to resolve all your doubts and concerns, will help you gauge on latest trends and developments and give you the path and direction for what is the next step so that you complete your task which is assigned to you. Under the mentoring process, it refers to teaching by an intelligent and trusted guide or an advisor. In recent times, it has emerged as an important technique to develop future manager. It is a one to one teaching learning process. Mentors are usually the role model for the trainee managers. These role models give them the platform where trainee managers can imbibe good characteristics from the mentors. As a concept, mentoring aims at enhancing the personal and professional competencies of trainees through the process of advising and coaching. Mentoring concentrates on the skills that help the recipient to work on their highest potential and achieve career advancement. Now here mentors may or may not be from the same organization but should be experienced, competent and mature individuals who have high amount of professional skills with them. In the course of mentoring, mentors provide coaching, counseling and challenging assignments besides offering personal support and encouragement to the mentee. And not only that, the mentor will safeguard the rights and interest of the trainee manager so that no one cheats on him or befools him with respect to any kind of organizational processes. As a recent phenomena, few organizations have introduced reverse mentoring in their organization. Now what is reverse mentoring? Reverse mentoring students is a very unique novel uh, process today in today's time and quite exciting also because here the, uh, the older manager, the senior manager, he takes the counseling or mentoring for specific know-how from the younger ones. Imagine you know tomorrow you join an organization and your bosses try to learn with different skills from you which you are equipped with because of the generational differences and the curriculum differences that you two, two generations have undergone. So reverse mentoring refers to process where senior manager tends to learn from the younger one and when the new employees are knowledgeable and seniors require such knowledge from pro prolonging their career, the later may choose for reverse mentoring. After mentoring, the second method with which we can have management development is called as business games. Isn't it very exciting to read that we as managers also take up certain games, games which not only are fun activities here but also learning experiences. So people have natural desire to get involved in gaming system. In today's time students you must be exposed to various online games also which are though very harmful and I would advise non, none of you should indulge yourself into that. Nonetheless, let us move further. So, this method makes us makes use of business games to create an interesting environment for trainees to learn their business lessons. Now, what business lessons and how they are learned? The primary goal of business game is to ensure the involvement of training in the learning process. In the business game techniques, the trainees form first teams and assume the managerial roles in two or more imaginary but vital companies. So this is all hypothetical exercise which is going on. These teams operate in a realistic but simulated situation. 
a simulation is which is real like which is not real but it is a real like situation and compete against one and the other by manipulating the controllable variables like price product volume advertising cost and so on here they behave like entrepreneurs or managers and start taking decisions on basis of these factors computer programs are extensively used to generate and manipulate different decisions and results normally replicating their real business situations now business case game method ensures that trainee learns to take decisions without fear of consequences of a wrong decision because here the situation is hypothetical and he knows that even if my decision goes wrong nothing much is on stake and the failure will not be devastating for me either for me or for the organization similarly they are able to evaluate the impact of their decision on others and others response to their decision thus they can improve on their decision making process gradually besides this method can improve the problem solving abilities and leadership skills also it promotes the cooperation and teamwork amongst the members which are the essential requirements for any manager to imbibe so we have discussed mentoring and business games now we move on to the concept of coaching coaching i think is not a new word for you students since probably when you were in your senior secondary classes you must have enrolled yourself in some other some or other kind of coaching for maybe for your professional studies or maybe for your some interest area that you wanted to get coaching in probably in any one of the sports that you like you might have got coaching also so what is your understanding of coaching here coaching refers to teaching and supervising someone in the coaching method senior managers are made responsible for coaching and developing the trainees who work directly under them so coaching can be both formally and informally done in the organization under coaching guidance or of the expertise or ex from the experience of the coaches immensely solicited one of the purposes of coaching is to make the trainee fit for eventually replace the senior manager in this position so we call it as succession planning the process of development may be formal or informal in this case and coaching is a comprehensive technique to develop managers and executive so it develops holistically and gives a greater insight to the management training then comes next technique that is behavioral modeling now what happens in behavioral modeling it's quite interesting students that in this the trainee he tries to imbibe or imitate the behavior of the role model role model manager and by doing so the trainee can find out two reason two ways he can get benefited one why my manager behaves in a particular manner when he behaves himself he realizes that what were the conditions and situations which prompted my manager to behave in this particular manner and second is to learn that how to behave in particular situations so you are remodeling bringing in change in behavior of the particular trainee or the mentee so in this method managers learn by imitating the behavior called a model of others the behavior model lets the trainee learn the right way of approaching and behaving different situations so this model behavior is a standardized behavior in one way students it is considered to be an ideal method for acquiring some relevant skills and knowledge from others in behavioral modeling can be used to improve the skills of managers in performance management grievance handling you know when you are handling any kind of grievance or resolving conflict of other individuals you can role model it you can see how your seniors used to behave in these scenarios how your seniors used to handle these grievances and how you can overcome the scenarios of resistance to change and tackling health and safety issues so you can see here students that all critical activities or sensitive activities are what you can learn with the help of behavior modeling that is by seeing your seniors how they behaved here the trainee are first introduced to the correct way of performing a task 
then they are encouraged to do the work in the same manner so behavioral change is being reinforced here and finally a review or is carried out and feedback is provided to them that to what extent they do did a good job or if there are certain some more additions in the behavior to be made this management development technique today is an extensively used and well researched technique and is very much appreciated psychologically based training intervention students next management development technique is in basket training now in in basket training what happens there is a container placed on the table of the trainee person this can be a wooden container or a metal container which we call as the basket and in the basket the senior managers or those who are mentoring they put in different papers they can be reports emails memorandums letters etc and now this since they all are in the basket that is why it is called as an in basket exercise now the person who is getting the training is asked to prioritize all these they are not in a priority order they are just in the jumbled manner put into the basket in order to know the analytical skills of the manager and tomorrow to teach him how to improvise on that the manager is given the task to prioritize these all papers by this we get to know that what are the capabilities and skill set of the individual at present and how far we have to bring into him that is he able to identify what all are the most important correspondences which need to be addressed immediately and then moving further to those correspondently with correspondence which are moderate in nature and then to the ones which can be a routine matter and can be can afford to have a delay of one or two days or maybe three days depending on the requirement so in in basket exercise it refers to a wooden metal container as i have explained the in this training it is development technique which educates the trainee about the need for and techniques of prioritizing the situations that await their responses so it helps the managers in prioritizing the numerous business papers as i mentioned reports emails telephone messages before acting on them now though not presented in any specific order some of these messages may be by urgent while others may be routine messages so now what the trainee is supposed to do in this trainee training trainees are first asked to establish priorities for each given situation before making any decisions regarding the handling of these messages so he is not told about what exactly he is supposed to do but he is being exposed to all these paperwork this form of development technique is found to be very accurate in predicting performance success or in management jobs so it can also be used not only as a training technique but as a selection method because here we get to know what is the iq level of the individual in terms of prioritizing and whether he is suitable to be fit into the management job then comes the next management development technique that is action learning now in action learning it allows the trainee managers to work on the problems of some other departments and not on those in the own department so if you are from hr department you are asked to find out the problems from maybe marketing department or maybe finance department now on full time basis a group of trainees analyze the real world problem of department and make the recommendation now there has to be a sync between the the basic idea behind this technique is to help the manager widen their sphere of knowledge why widen their sphere of knowledge because he belongs to one group and he is catering to the he belongs to one group and he is catering to the other groups so he is adding on to his sphere of knowledge and he gets expertise in different fields while he studies what is going on in the other department and his knowledge in other functional areas also gets increased so usual steps involved in this action learning training is picking up a team of trainees first so here it's not individual it's a team allotment of ambitious business problems which exceed the normal areas of trainees capability and knowledge they have to stretch themselves a little more they have to come out from their comfort zone of the jobs they were doing 
and providing an intense planning time during which team works on the business problem. So these are various steps one after the other that the trainee has to follow. And then assigning adequate time to discuss the problems and make recommendations. These are very important aspects, what recommendations they make, how far they were able to meet to the challenging business problem that we have discussed. So finally, senior managers and experts, they will review those recommendations and share their opinion with the trainee. And this method helps the organization to improve its in-house transfers and promotions of the manager. So this is another decision that the manager has to take. And this decision also pertains to staffing part in the organization because we have to staff the right person. And exercises like action learning help the managers to identify those performers in the organization who are more suitable for the decisions like transfer and promotion. Then comes university based programs. So university based program means definitely some institutions of excellence, academic excellence are involved here. So in this method, managers seek to develop knowledge by joining the programs offered by various universities, colleges and centers of excellence like IIMs and IITs, which are the most eminent reputed institutions in the country. Now certainly the educational institutions play very important role when it comes to giving management executive education in India. For instance, IIMs they offer managers of industry and opportunity to pursue numerous practical oriented management development programs. These programs may be of short duration say 3 to 10 days or maybe long as 3 to 6 months as well depending on the nature of content to be discussed and the professional training to be imbibed or development to be given. These programs offered by universities and colleges are becoming increasingly popular among the manager in today's time because it gives them the manager an opportunity to go back to classroom, sit there and learn the latest con content in their relevant field. But Moreover, open universities and distance learning programs are also available to managers to upgrade their knowledge and skill in the relevant field if it is intended by the manager. And these institutions use different methods to teach to the trainees. They can be case study methods, lectures, growth stories to provide up to date management skills and practices. Now, as an outcome of globalization, many foreign universities are now setting up bases in India to launch programs that can help managers strengthen their managerial skills. So, this is also part of management development. I hope students, you are along with me understanding the various ways and means by which even tomorrow you can develop yourself as management. Uh, as a part of managerial staff in organization, you also can develop yourself with the help of these techniques. Then comes next technique, executive coaches. It is gaining a large acceptance as an important management development technique, which is necessary for training managers who will be the future organizational leaders. It is a program of one to one collaboration between certified external coach and a manager. So here the manager has to go outside the organizational setting to get this particular coaching. Through executive coaching managers improve their leadership skills. So this is generally for the higher level positions gain new perspectives and reach to maximum potential. Executive coaching is acknowledged as an important element of standard leadership development program for, for top ranking executives. So basically it is all about the top management executive development takes place. Usually executive coaching focuses on three features, strategy, organizational change and behavioral coaching. Now students can you answer this question that why these executives are developed on these three areas of strategy, change and behavioral coaching because strategy because these top managers have to be the they have the steering wheel of the organization in their hand and they have to decide on the direction or path for the organization. 
organizational change because while searching for the path for the organization these managers will come across different kinds of calamities or different kind of threats or challenges and along with that opportunities as well so these opportunities and threats will guide the manager to take the path and bring in change in their routine so thus they need to be trained in how to bring in organizational change effectively smoothly and in congruence with the existing organizational mission and vision statement and in terms of their behavioral coaching because the behavior of the leader manager is the one which is taken as a role model behavior for the subordinates or by the subordinates so whatever behavior in terms of fairness equality equity code of conduct values ethics beliefs norms whatever the leadership has in his philosophy that gets disseminated down in the organization so these are very important areas in which the manager needs to be effectively groomed and thus management development is to be administered here executive coaching develops leaders in context of their current jobs without removing them from their day to day responsibilities executive coaching can also help executives develop new ways to tackle reoccurring problems this is one of the very beautiful innovative uh, concept that the same problems which are reoccurring again and again may have a unique solution to it which you can imbibe through the training method it is also very useful especially in times of change for managers in the form of promotions additional assignments and other new challenges many companies now have realized the stimulating role that this method can play and are employing executive coaches to develop the performance and capability of their middle and top management then comes in house development centers for management development the in house development centers are also known as corporate universities the other ones which we discussed earlier are the academic universities or professional universities professional course oriented institutions so it is an emerging management development technique and large companies are establishing their own in-house development center to develop the required skill and knowledge amongst their employees so in this case if any organization develops this in-house development center the employees need not go outside for any kind of specialist training they may get the same within these centers it is a technique for exposing future managers to practical training courses so that they can enhance their managerial competencies now in house development centers usually make available those courses and programs that exactly support the management development requirement of the organization so if the management development requirement is to train in the organizational change the courses will cater to that if it has to uh, develop the executive in terms of behavior then the in house center will come up with the same kind of uh, courses which pertain to behavioral modeling etc so such is the benefit of having an in house development center many companies are often working jointly with academic institutions training and development programs providers and web based educational portals to conduct packages of programs and materials which are suitable to their employees requirement so a collaborative effort is also done in order to have academic institutions and the management development centers which are in house to the corporate sector the next method of management development students is executive orientation this method is also called the onboard development method executive orientation is the technique adopted by an organization to assist its new managers in learning the firm's structure culture and practices quickly so that they can begin to contribute to the organization as soon as possible so here orientation we know is given at what time orientation is given when the employee joins the organization and during this time he may not be aware about various 
sections of the organization may be like the structure or culture or practices so executive orientation is one of the uh, most important factors because the leader has to dash into job and run the organization from the very first day he joins as the senior management team team member may be managing director ceo or cfo etc so this orientation will enable him to quickly learn how the organization is performing this method looks to educate new managers about intricacies of administration clarifies their roles responsibilities and familiarize them with the cultural norms and practices which is very essential for the manager to work on if necessary follow up meetings can be conducted to check their growth experiences and challenges these follow up meetings will be a kind of performance review maybe not a regular review but partial performance review in which how far have they understood can be assessed and the course of development exercise may be redirected so here we have an example of an in a indian uh, initiative that is arcelor mittal university employee development initiative so as we know that organizations they require leaders or managers at all levels in all parts of the business at all times so these leaders must be capable of what capable of inspiring encouraging and energizing the people working with them in a business environment which is characterized by constant change and dynamism is almost every fair it is necessary to constantly educate and update the leaders about the change and emerging management practices so for this purpose organizations undertake many management development programs to train and develop their managers and incidentally the initiatives of arcelor mittal are worth mentioning it is the world's leading steel and mining company students so this is the portfolio with 2 lakh 60 thousand employees across 60 countries see the global presence and this company places a lot of emphasis on giving its employees sufficient opportunity to be not only effective managers but great leaders in this regard arcelor mittal has undertaken two major initiatives namely the global employee development program gedp and arcelor mittal university the gedp focus sorry the gedp forms the basis for people development strategy of this company so this can be one of the in house executive development initiative by arcelor mittal group and this program looks to deliver lasting improvements in performance potential development and career of the employees and through this gedp arcelor mittal expects to enhance its efficiency in performance management succession management talent identification and development planning the other initiative arcelor mittal university plays a significant role in strengthening its corporate culture and advancing employee careers by enrolling in the course the employees can upgrade themselves and get then get due promotions also so this university offers career enhancing management courses tailor made induction programs online language tuitions etc to date in 2018 more than 20000 employees took a total of around took a total of around 375500 hours of courses and training linked to the university how motivating is this story of this giant company that the initiative of the organization can bring in changes bring in a lot of changes in the career path personal and professional life of individual managers the next method of management development is the case study method now i think you all must be aware by now what is a case study method this case study can be a real life situation which is already an example of the organization like the example we just now studied about the arcelor mittal group or it can be an imaginary or hypothetical situation in which different scenarios are created and these scenarios need to be critically analyzed and after the critical analysis there need there has to be 
some solutions to the problem po posed in the case. This helps or enables the manager to have a real like scenario generation which can teach them what kind of so solutions or probable alternatives to those problem solutions can be identified. So, in this method trainees are provided with necessary information in a case study format. They are expected to come up with decisions based on their understanding of the given cases. For each case study presents elaborate information on specific series of real or imaginary incident. The case study may deal with activities of an organization or with specific problems faced by the organization during the course of operation and during the interaction amongst its members. Trainee here is expected to evaluate the cases carefully, understand the problems objectively, identify the causes appropriately and develop possible solutions optimally and choose and implement the best solution finally. So, this is the grooming that the employee or the manager gets here in the case study method. I am sure you all must have been exposed to various case studies during your study till now and you must have given solutions to the probable problems which were mentioned in the case. Then comes role playing. Now, what is role playing? Role playing is very interesting exercise. You have to put yourself into shoes of the other person that can be the manager, that can be the leader, that can be a foreman or supervisor in the organization. So, this technique is by doing you get to know that how we have to perform. For example, role playing as an HR selection executive. So, there you have to be part of the interview board and you have to maintain a list of questions and you have to hypothetically ask those questions or administer that process of recruitment and selection and get to know how it while you are studying in the college, but how or what challenges the HR manager or HR selection executive faces while he is performing the task. So, role playing refers to acting out in a particular role. This method is simply the learning by doing technique. The trainee instead of merely listening to the trainer's instructions regarding the ways and means of solving a problematic situation. So, in, in case of other techniques, it was more of instructions which were given how to resolve. In this particular role playing technique, the, uh, the solving of a problematic solution or discussing them responds to particular problem by acting out into the real life situation. He behaves like that particular individual. He takes up the role of that individual. That can be role of a foreman, supervisor, a manager of one personal, uh, one functional area or can be even uh, managing director or so. So, typically a trainee assumes the role of specific personality relevant to given situation and responds to the problems of situation in that role. So, if for a hypothetically if the situation is that the workers are on strike and they are demanding for some bonus from the management and you are the safety manager or manager industrial relations in the organization, hypothetically you have to behave in that manner. Now, how do you resolve it with the help of various concepts of industrial relations that is maybe collective bargaining or maybe by having uh, a grievance redressal or by arbitration or counseling, board of consolation. So, all these concepts you should be knowing first and then you can execute yourself into the position of that particular manager managers industrial relation and handle the scenario well and then you can give some uh, solutions to this problem this is which is occurring. The role play may be that of a superior or a subordinate or any other person it is not necessarily going to be always the superior in the organization and this method is often used to impart necessary skills for conducting interviews as I mentioned that you can be an HR executive who is uh, conducting selection interviews for grievance handling as I just mentioned the kind of strike that the workers are doing to get their bonus or any other grievances they have, performance evaluation and disciplinary proceedings. So, all these can be the range of topics for which role play can be administers. Further, it helps to enhance the interpersonal relations, problem solving abilities, motivational skills and leadership, leadership techniques of the trainees. So, they are these are the takeaways or you can say 
learnings or takeaways from the role playing technique role playing is one of the commonly used techniques for both technical and management development so here we have we have another example of grooming talent at colgate palmolive you all are aware of this terminology colgate palmolive so management is committed to continuous growth and development of employees and organizational effectiveness normally give significant priority to training and development programs in their organizational overall goals and plans so management also recognize the training programs not only it helps employees in increasing their effectiveness by building and refining job skills but also greatly enhance the quality of products and services which has a cascading effect higher is the skill set better is going to be the product and service in the organization so large organizations normally provide a broad range of training opportunities to their members the training and development program of colgate palmolive deserves a mention so colgate palmolive determines its training and development needs based on individual development plan and the business need both individual development plan for career enhancement of or career planning of the individuals who are working in organization business need is because if there is any change that is taking place an organization needs an upskilled employee so this multinational company identifies the specific needs of individual and organization through annual exercise and the outcome of such exercise form the basis for preparing for training need inventory that what kind of trainings we need do we need technical training in the coming times do we need behavioral training in the coming times do we need administrative training in the coming times so all this need is identified through this annual exercise in the company colgate's approach to employee skill development includes formal classroom study sharing global best practices which is a very important aspect and developing practical work applications based on real life learnings by all these they are able to come to a highly exclusive skill development program further this development program of colgate focuses on its value of caring global teamwork and continuous improvement so these are the phenomenons which take the organization to greater sustainability and growth the entire training process centers on theme managing with respect to behavior so it is all about behavior there is a statement students which says that behavior is an outcome of its consequences so if we are able to modify the behavior as per our requirements it will be modified based on what consequences we are going to give if an employee is doing something good if we, and we provide him a pat on a back or some kind of rewards or benefits he is tend to repeat that behavior and that looks like the philosophy of this country uh, sorry philosophy or this of this company that manage with respect to behavior if we are able to manage the behavior of an individual it will have a cascading effect and eventually the employee will perform as per the desired requirements so in these managing with managing with respect to behavior includes effective communication giving and seeking feedback to the employees valuing unique contributions and promoting teamwork and the example behavior which is the set the example behavior is most important in colgate competency it includes leadership functional and technical competency enhancement so this is a wonderful example of how organizations are focusing on enhancing the training initiatives and giving the organizational employees better platform to grow then comes conditions which are necessary for effective development program so till now we have tried to understand what are different management development programs let us now try to find out what are the necessary conditions for an effective development program so the first and foremost condition is the thought process of top management that is whether the top management is supporting this development program or not so the training efforts require the support and understanding of the highest level of management highest level of management means the one who is either the promoter of the organization or we also call him as entrepreneur 
he should be the one who believes in giving support for such initiatives why because training also incurs cost and if it is not there in the philosophy of the top management they may try to avoid this and save cost on account of it so indeed the top management must be committed to training and development they should also see that if we give um, appropriate training and development to our employees the response would be that they will be doing their jobs in self motivated manner and it will have eventually a benefit for organization management should treat training as an important segment of corporate culture so culture should be like we celebrate birthdays anniversaries we go for recreational activities this is also culture and culture is that we have every 2 months a training program or every 3 months a training program for required skills it must commit itself to investing the necessary resources and time for training program so investment in human resource is very very important second prerequisite for effective development of the employees is receptive mindset of the trainees so without an open and receptive mindset of whom the one who's taking the training it would be difficult for the trainees to learn new ideas skills and knowledge quickly and efficiently because they are not open minded if they have lethargy in their mind and they don't want to come out of their status quo the result will be that they will not have this receptivity in mind so to achieve the training goals completely the organization must develop a confident and self motivated mindset so before you give training you have to work on getting an employee to this level level of confidence and self motivation mindset an analytical mindset an open proactive and flexible mindset and also a mindset for continual impro- improvement amongst the employees which is highly required next prerequisite is that employee development should not be a one time process rather it has to be a continuous process so organizations should adopt a comprehensive continuous and systematic approach to meet the training needs of their employees organizations should evolve a system to analyze and identify the organizational and occupational training needs now without technological advancements you cannot go ahead with any kind of latest tools and techniques which are in the field of development so technological advancements are something to be focused upon so technology has a decisive influence on various actions of manager like it affects planning execution and delivery of training program so the mass entry of computers and the internet has dramatically changed the way business functions are conducted in today's time we have various e learning e learning platforms also from where the various courses are taken and the development of individuals can be done students you are also part of this right now you are listening to me and understanding this through an e learning portal itself so technological advancement advancements play a vital role in disseminating the latest trends to the or upgrading the trainees these developments have necessitated changes in training processes too so we have current different platforms for online trainings as well so unlike workers who need work related skills and techniques to overcome their present performance deficits managers typically require administrative acumen this is important the managers require effective analytical skills and administrative acumen to enhance their decision making capability so if you can recall we started of the session by discussing on that the decision making ability of manager cannot be a trial and error method rather it has to be very logical and systematic based on different premises or rationale so this to in order to have effective analytical skills and administrative acumen right kind of training has to be imparted so thus any management development program is general long term oriented on and not more of technical oriented so now that we have found out that what are different types of management development programs students for the executives let us now have some information on the 
steps in organization of management development process. So, the first step students here is identifying development needs. We have to find out here that what are the competencies in which we have to give training to the or development to our executives. Then comes second step that is appraisal of present managerial talent. So, what is the current by this we can identify what is the current level of know how and analytical skills of our manpower. Then we move on to the third step that is inventory of executive manpower. As an organization we have different levels. So, how many people are at top level which cater to the executive manpower apart from the rest of the organizational members. Then comes the next step of developing development programs. As we just now saw various development programs of different companies and techniques to develop this program by which methodology or what techniques we want to use we have to highlight it at this stage. Then comes the second last stage that is conducting development programs. In this category we execute the decided development program so that can be executive development training in terms of role play, simulation exercise, in basket, mentorship, coaching etcetera. So, this is the actual implementation of the development plan and finally, in the end we move on to the last stage of this process which talks about evaluating development program. Under evaluation of development program, we have to see that how far we have achieved the desired outcome. Now, how desired outcome is seen students? Desired outcome is seen in the form of the behavior or what we call as action by the executive. Is the executive now more capable to take right kind of or right set of decision making? If that is the case, then the training program, the management development program is a high success. That means, we identified and developed the right kind of needs and competencies in the executive manager. Having said this students, we have now understood that how or why the management development program is conducted, what are different techniques and tools to conduct it, what is the various significance attached to the management development programs. As we know that the management development programs are there to help the organization to achieve the survival and growth in future and not only that sustainability in terms of organizational members as well. So, I would like to highlight here that the, this is the bibliography that we have referred for this particular course. You also can refer to this bibliography to have a deeper understanding on what are the contents of management development or executive development. So, here I would like to conclude my session on management development and we should be now proceeding towards understanding different aspects of motivational theories or different types of motivational theories in the forthcoming session. That is all from my side for this session. Thank you.
Hello, good morning everybody. I am uh, Raghunandan Sengupta. So, I will just give you uh, the a very brief uh, excitement area of finance which is quantitative finance and that has a huge market starting around about 10 years back and it is exploding exponentially. So, what uh, do we mean by quantitative finance? Quantitative finance is actually the application of different mathematical and statistical techniques in the area of financial markets, be it say for example, derivative pricing, be it in the area of say for example, portfolio management, be it in the area of asset liability management, be it in the area of portfolio management. We see that the application has exploded in such a way that there is a huge opportunity for people who have a quantitative background in mathematics and statistics, they can utilize those in the area of finance, but obviously with some prior knowledge of, of, of uh, finance as a subject. Now, when we say about quantitative finance, as I said, it is an area of applied mathematics and statistics applied in, in financial markets. Use of different areas, if somebody is interested to know, we have stochastic calculus, we have derivative pricing, we have operation research, we have quantitative techniques like differential uh, equations, stochastic calculus, time series and they are heavily used in the area of quantitative finance as I mentioned. Now, we all know that in 2000, in 1997, the Nobel Prize in Economics, so it is basically the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economics was given to the work of Merton and Scholz in the area of derivative pricing. And after that, there has been an exponential increase in the area of, of quantitative techniques in, in, in quantitative finance and the, in the area of, of different type of derivative pricing. With the advent, moreover with the advent of, of high-ended and sophisticated computing data, big data has come in a very big way where application areas starting from computing, from different type of algorithm design have been taken up in such a big way that nowadays at least we are able to understand that how high frequency data algorithm trading can be utilized using the concept of quantitative finance in the area of, of finance as such. But there is a flip side also, obviously when, when, when there is a huge amount of development, so obviously due to some regulation errors or something, there has been some, some pitfalls which I think is should be a bullet point for people who are in really interested to take up quantity finance, they should be aware. So, consider the financial crisis in 2008 and later on and we are seeing different banks are failing, different financial institutions are facing a problem, countries are facing a problem like in Europe, in, 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 in USA. So, what should be done? So, the main thing is that even if you know the technique is best for people who are investors, who are private players, organizations like banks, governments should use these techniques in a very somber manner such that the application areas of quantitative finance using the techniques which we learned can be utilized in the best possible way to garner the overall the in-depth knowledge a person has in trying to utilize these quantitative techniques in finance. And I am sure that people who have the background, who have the knowledge, who have the, the sophistication, who have the, the knowledge of the society can definitely use quantity finance in a very big way in trying to make their mark in this exciting field which you are going to see in years to come. And I am sure it will be a very exciting learning tool for all the participants who, who will take quantity finance as a, as, a, as a subject in years to come. Thank you and I, am, and I wish all the participants all the best and best of luck for the programs they will take. Thank you.